Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Tomoko Uchida. I have been working as a search engineer at Gromit Co. Ltd. in Japan. And I'm a collaborator of the Look project in GitHub. And that is a best known tool for debugging and learning using Solar Elastic Search Index, as you might know. Uh, do you know Look? Uh, yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, if, uh, And this is the outline of my talk. And first off, I briefly go over NLP for L. Then I explain how NLP technique can improve users' search experience. Then I will introduce interesting usages of single filter to you. I will use single filter to calculate the probabilities of language model and the hidden Markov model. And I will introduce transliteration program on HMM application. At the end, I will introduce NLP for a framework which is under development right now. Um, what's NLP for L? Again, it stands for NLP tool for the scene. It's an open source project with Apache license uh, currently um, in GitHub, written in Scala. Uh, our goal is to improve the C user's search experience using NLP techniques. The one of the distinct characteristics of our project is that it uses the C index as a corpus database. In the, instead of using text data directly, NLP 4L lets users put their text data into the scene index. Once the data is in, words appearing in corpus are settled in the scene index. Trying to count the number of words, NLP 4L reads the scene index instead of original text data. There are some other aspects in our project, though. I'll show you transliteration program later. As it uses hidden Markov model, and when calculating probabilities for HMM, it uses the C index to get the word count. Next, I'll explain how NLP improves search experience we think it's important to know how NLP technologies can improve users' experience when they search. And this is 112IR. You may know two evaluation measures that are very popular in IR field, the precision and the recall. The pink circle specifies your expectation when the query is made and is called a target set because it is the target for search engine. If the search engine returns a set like the pink circle here, the user is happy and satisfied by the result. But in reality, the search engine cannot fully satisfy you, though it could satisfy your expectation partially. So here's the blue circle in the rectangle like this. It covers a part of the target set. As a result, the inside of the rectangle would be separated into four sections. Uh, four sections are composed of the combination of positive or negative and true or false. Uh, here we have all parameters that are going to be used in our evaluation measures their precision and recall. Uh, they are very popular, as you might have heard of them. Uh, the precision is, uh, excuse me. Uh, for example, 
if you make a query and the search engine returns 100 documents, but you find only three documents that satisfy your expectation, then the precision is 3%. Uh, for example, when you execute a search expecting 10 documents, but the search engine returns only three documents, the recall is 30%. Uh, now we got ev evaluation measures. And in terms of these measures, we as a user of search engine want a search engine that high performance, one that the board's precision and recall are high. However, it is hard to support high precision and recall at the same time. Uh, the problem is well known trade-off, a trade-off between precision and recall. Uh, it, it, And this is the solution for having it both ways that I have thought of, uh, we have thought of. The important thing is to implement high recall first, but as a result, you got low precision as I've showed you. To solve this problem, we have two methods. One of them is at the bottom left. It uses the facet and the filter query in order to gradually improve precision. The other method is at the bottom right. It uses method is at the bottom right. It uses the ranking tuning technique. And ranking is, which means the order the search results are displayed. I will discuss ranking tuning during the NLP4 framework discussion later. Uh, let's look at the other two boxes now. In order to improve recall, there are several methods in machine and solar, such as using n-gram instead of using morphological analyzer, using a synonym dictionary. But here, I'll briefly introduce you to transliteration as an NLP tool that may be used to improve recall. NLP4L has a tool for transliteration. I'll describe it later. Now, we need to improve the decreased precision. To do that, we can use facet and filter queries, but these tools aren't always available. I will explain the reason why in the next in few slides. In order to make these techniques available, we can use named entity extraction that is one of well-known NLP tasks. Document classification can be used for the same purpose, though I'll focus on named entity extraction in the later slides. Um, now, let's see how the facet and the filter query can be used to improve the decreased precision. Uh, imagine, imagine that you visit eBay website and search for what you want to buy when you don't have any particular watches in your mind. First, you would enter a keyword watch in the search box and click search button. Then you get many watches displayed on your screen. This blue circle is a set of watches you got. It should cover almost all watches you want to check, but if it says as it is, you would have a hard time finding watches you like because, of course, you have so many unwanted watches in your results list. That's where the facet and the filter query come in. You find facet links on the right side of the screen. For example, there is a link to filter by gender and you would click men's link. As it narrows down the search result, you get a smaller set. And the other filter queries can be added. 
Again, you can click another link, for example, the link of 100 to 150 that appears in filter by price. Then you get further smaller result set. Now the size of the result set is small enough and is easier to find watches you, can, uh, you want to see. Now we see that the facet in the filter query techniques can contribute to improving the decreased precision. To implement this scenario, documents that users will search must have a structure like this. The documents need to be structured. You see in this slide, the documents have price and gender fields in order to filter query to be implemented. Unfortunately, not all documents in the world are structured. For example, articles in newspapers don't have the structure you see in this slide. So one of NLP techniques can help you here. A named entity extractor is the one of the answer to this. And other solutions are maybe entity linking or terms extraction or anything else. Um, for example, named entity extraction. Named entities are distinguished by colors here. NEE is a tool to find and extract named entities from articles as each named entity belongs to its class or category, we can use NEE tool to convert our unstructured documents to structured documents. And eventually, we can apply facet and filter queries to them. Uh, NLP4L has an interface to open NLP to use NEE function. Open NLP works nicely but unfortunately, it doesn't have model files for Japanese. To implement them, we have tagged named entities for Japanese news articles by ourselves. Next, I will show you how you can use single filter of Lucene to calculate probabilities of language model and the hidden Markov model. Uh, let's look at language model. Language model is often used to represent the fluency of language. For example, in machine translation, the translator uses language model in order to choose the most natural sentence from several candidates. This is a simple formula. It represents a conditional probability of word apple given that word am has occurred because an apple is more fluent than an chocolate, the probability of left side member is larger enough than the probability of right side member. As n-gram model is the most widely used for calculating language model, let's see how we do it. It's simple. Here, to calculate the probability of word apple, given that word am has occurred, result of counting the number of the series of an apple is divided by the number of word am. So if we have a field that tokenizes word bigram fields, word to z, and a normal field, word, we can calculate language model from Lucene index by using NLP4L's total term break method. And of course, we use single filter for, for word bigram, word bigram field. And then the same pattern can be used for part of speech tagging. Uh, it's very popular example. Uh, we will use this corpus. We have three documents in our corpus. It has part of speech tags as well, and here, the table is the description. I'd like to use the hidden Markov model to solve the part of speech tagging task. This is the formula for HMM. So, excuse me. We have a series of words here, 
these are given, then we want to know the most likely series of part of speech tags. As it's difficult to solve this directly, we will solve this by applying an approximation of HMM. On the right side, we have two conditional probabilities here. And we can calculate these conditional probabilities by counting the number of words or even part of speech tags in the seen index, as we've seen in the previous slides. And if we use our corpus for HMM training, we get this diagram. Um, for key point is we get this diagram from the scene index and using single filter. Numbers in this slide are probabilities. These probabilities can be calculated by applying the same method. Uh, let's see an interesting application, transliteration that NLP4L provides. It uses HMM. Transliteration is a process of transcribing letters or words from one alphabet to another one to facilitate comprehension and pronunciation for non-native speakers. For example, here is an example of transliteration between English and Japanese. All Japanese words here originated from English words. So they are called long words. Usually, Japanese long words are written in katakana in order to simulate the pronunciation of original words. We Japanese often use English words in the documents, but use katakana for queries or vice versa. Uh, let's see a specific example. Here, the user searched an English word, mouse. But you got mouse in Japanese highlighted in search results. Uh, bold, uh, bold figures. Uh, what we've learned here is that if we have a list of English katakana word pairs that are originated from English words, it helps improve recall for a search engine. That's nice for multi-language um, search engine. And what's nicer is that NLP4L has a training data for transliteration between English and Japanese, and in addition to that, transliteration program. Uh, NLP4L has this kind of training data that is a list of English-Japanese long words pairs. <coughs> we gathered them from the internet. Then I applied them for alignment. This aligned data can be used for training HMM. Here is an example script in NLP4L for transliteration. Um, this is a tiny script. Uh, it can be executed by loading like this uh, below command. This sample script learns the aligned data and creates a model. Throw in your katakana word and the script predicts the most likely alphabetical word and returns it to you. And this is example of HMM. This table represents the input katakana words and its predicted English words. Uh, as you will see the returned strings are nothing more than prediction. So some of them are incorrect. That is, we cannot use them as, as they are in order to improve recall. So we need a solution. Uh, this is a solution for the problem. This is a system, but let's, uh, let's uh, skip the detailed explanation uh, due to the time considerations. This final dictionary is, excuse me. Uh, this final 
output dictionary is considered as a synonym dictionary and can be used solar in order to increase recall. Uh, this concludes the introduction of current NLP HOEL2. In addition to it, we are now developing a framework where NLP HOEL and other various NLP tools can work on. Uh, NLP HOEL framework improves the search experience of machine-based search systems such as Solar and Elasticsearch. We provide not only a framework, but also the tools which I introduced today as a reference implementation. We are also planning to provide the transliteration corpus as, and so on. We use NLP and machine learning technique to output models, dictionaries, and machine index. Uh, because NLP and machine learning are not perfect, we provide a GUI that enables you to examine output dictionaries. Uh, this is the overview of framework. The blue frame is the framework, while the items inside it are functions provided as plugins. There also are several functions that I didn't have a chance to introduce to you today, or that we have not implemented as of yet. NLP foil framework outputs data, including word and phrase information that are extracted from sources, including corpus as search engine dictionaries. The output dictionaries are search and suggestion or autocomplete, did you mean search, synonym dictionary, user dictionary for morphological analyzer, and keyword attachment dictionary. Uh, in some cases, external machine learning tools such as classification are uh, used. Because NLP and machine learning are not perfect, we provide a GUI that enables you to manually examine them. Uh, you can deploy these dictionaries to Solar or Elasticsearch from the GUI. Here is the UI prototype now under development for NLP HOEL framework. Uh, we named this Lucia. I'll show the steps for keyword attachment. Keyword attachment is a technique to attach additional information to Solar documents. First, register the Solar collection in the schema information such as URL, unique field name, and so on. And also, NLP or ML prediction tasks chain should be registered to extract keywords. The chain settings are described by Hokon format and JSON extension widely used in Java Scala developers. Next, input all documents to Lucia. To do that, the HTTP post entry point is provided. Then keywords will be extracted from input documents. Here are all extracted keywords from whole documents by OpenNLP, for example. Uh, you can use arbitrary techniques. Here are the extracted keywords for a document. Each keyword is associated to one of solar fields. Keywords are detected automatically by well-tuned NLP models. However, wrong or inappropriate entries can be included. So check the keywords and remove wrong ones manually from the UI. This is important steps. After checking keywords, sync them to solar index. This will be done by executing partial update commands. Uh, this is an example solar document before keywords are attached. After attaching keywords, now solar documents have additional data for filtering, facetting, or sorting. Uh, this is an example of uh, named entity extraction. If you 
the rich keywords already have been attached to solar documents. They also will be removed from solar index, of course, when next sync action executed. Uh, this keyword attachment is considered as a general implementation approach for functions, including learning to rank, personalized search, named entity extraction, now I have described, and document classification. Among these, I will explain learning to rank and personalized search. I will explain next slides. This is a specific method to improve precision that were called ranking tuning on the previous slides. Learning to rank is a task that machine learns data including access logs to obtain an appropriate search ranking. Uh, numbers on this slide specifies ranking. That is the order the documents are displayed. The ranking before the learning to rank is applied is out of order, and the documents have that users what are pushed lower in the order. When learning to rank is properly applied, information that users want is placed higher in the order. So the precision is still low, it would be regarded as an um, extremely high performance search engine from user's point of view. Let's think about realizing this with the scene. Program learns from access logs and other sources that the score of document D should be larger than the score that Lucene normally calculates for query Q. And as you can see in this diagram, it performs keyword attach query Q in the document D. Increasing the boost value of this field makes the ranking of this document go up from the next search. Personalized search means optimizing the search ranking for query Q on a searcher by searcher basis. When you search for word Apple, for example, the target sets are different for users looking for Apple as in computer and users looking for Apple as in fruit. So you have to optimize the ranking searcher by searcher. Likewise, program runs from access log and other sources that the score of document D should be larger than the score that Lucene normally calculates for query Q by user U. Since you cannot pass U user to the score function parameter as Lucene, uh, Lucene restricts doing so, you have to combine query Q and user U to create Q sub U. Now, this task can be realized by keyword attachment as well. Um, next. I'll show steps to generate synonyms, which is another feature of the, our framework. Uh, first, <coughs> executes the job that generate pairs of katakana and the corresponding English words from Japanese corpus by using transliteration technique I've described in previous slides. Uh, of course, you can use any logic for generating the synonyms here. Auto-generated pairs, in other words, candidate synonyms may also need human adjustments. After adjustment, export the pairs to a synonym file. The file will be deployed to Sora and use it in arbitrary synonym filters. Uh, we are looking for the engineers who are willing to work with us on NPHOL. Contact us if you are interested in our projects. Uh, thank you for listening. <laughs>